Hey guys, Kilmo Houdin here, and welcome back to another video. Today, I wanted to talk about how my CPU project is going, my 8-bit CPU project. So, if you remember from the last video, I was able to add four-digit binary numbers together and get an output in an LED array. Well, before, that entire circuit used to take up this entire breadboard, and obviously, that entire CPU was not finished. It was just one small section of the CPU that I had built before, and if it's taking up the entire breadboard, then there's a problem, because then I'll need more space. So I decided to buy, I learned how to make an adder, and I taught you guys how to make an adder um, in CPU by using XOR gates and AND gates. So I decided, now that we know how to build one and we understand the logic behind it and this actual circuitry behind it, we can now miniaturize that and just take an IC that already is an adder. So this IC up here, this one right here, uh, this one right here, is actually an adder. So it takes this entire breadboard of information, this entire circuit that took up this entire breadboard, and condenses it down into a single IC. And that's amazing. And in fact, that IC can be made... Um, microns tiny, uh, nanometers small. So the reason I made it small is this way I'd have space to continue building. And what I've made is the ability to subtract now. So now not only can we add, but we can actually subtract. And we can do this by pressing this little button. I have this red, um, red array of switches that allows me to input values for what I'm trying to add. And then by pressing this little button right here, you probably can't see it, um, by pressing the little button over there, we can actually say subtract B from A. And I already discussed, I'm pretty sure I already discussed in a previous video about what subtraction actually is and how we occur it. But in case you need a refresh, we can go ahead and do that. Let me just unplug this and then get some paper on. Okay. So, all right, great. So, when we do addition, I already explained this, but every single operation can be reduced down to addition. So if we have A plus B uh, equals C, right? This is just addition, normal addition. But if we have A minus B, this is actually equal to A plus negative B, right? So 4 minus 3 equals 1. 4 plus negative 3 also equals 1. And these are the same, right? They're the exact same number. So a minus b is equal to a plus negative b. So we're utilizing this. So when we have this adder block right here that adds two numbers, a and b, right? What we actually do is if we want to subtract right we send b through a negator which then hooks up to b which then hooks up to the inline for b for the adder and then this gives us our result c now if you remember if you remember i would go back and look at the previous video but to actually do subtraction in binary you not only just negate it but you also add one and then we do this by setting the carry in of the first adder to plus voltage, right? That's just adding one by setting carry in to plus one volt. So that's how we subtract in binary. We negate B. Uh, if B is one, then we make it zero and then send it in to the adder and then add one to the adder by setting the carry in of the first addition block to, uh, to plus one. Okay. Now the circuit for this is actually very interesting. The circuit for this is really, really interesting because what you actually need to do is a multiplexer. And you need a multiplexer, okay? Multiplexer. I'm not even sure if that's how you spell it. I'm not sure at all. But a multiplexer is different for the reason that you can switch between multiple outputs, okay? So. Say, for example, if we were to write it into code, um, if the easiest way to think about a multiplexer is to think about it prog um, programmatically, programmatically, uh, sure, right, to think about it in that context. So, like, when you write a program, you say, if, uh, let's say, let's say bit is equal to one, right, then run this code, right, then run this code. That's a multiplexer. And then if bit 
is equal to zero, then run this code, right? Why do I keep writing my ends as M? Okay, then run this code, right? That's what a multiplexer is, which is different from normal circuit. It's a normal circuit. We have it do something, do something, and then return bit, right? So when you have like a normal AND gate, uh, how to explain it? Um, if you have AND gate, you have two inputs, right? Uh, a and B that goes into the AND gate, and then you have one input, one output C. But for a multiplexer, you can have you can have multiple inputs for a multiplexer too. But what we're doing is a single one, right? We're doing a single input multiplexer. I'm going to call my multiplexer MP, and then you have multiple outputs Q, and then Q1. Okay, so depending if A is equal to one then you run Q1, and then you can have it go through some specific circuit here. If A is equal to zero, then you can have it run some sort of specific circuit here, which is different because in an AND gate or in some normal gate, we would have, depending what A is, C will change, right? Depending what A is, C will change, and then we can't do anything about C. No matter what C is, nothing does, right? Nothing happens because there's only one output, and the output is C. Now, C can change in value, but there's only one output C. For a multiplexer, you have multiple outputs depending on the value of the input. So normal circuit, depending on the value of the input, it'll change the value of the output. Multiplexer, depending on the value of the input, you have multiple outputs. Okay, so they go to specific different terminals. So you can have it, if it A is one, right? If A is one, so A means uh, subtract, okay? Subtract. If A is 1, then you want to subtract. So Q1, if A is 1, um, then we want to run it through, what is it? We want to run it through a NOT gate. Okay. And if Q, if A is 0, we don't want to subtract, then we just want to go straight on through. And this will hook up to there. Do you understand? Okay. This is what's so spectacular, because we only want to do the NOT gate if A is 1. Because if we did a normal gate, no matter what A was, if we do a NOT gate here, then it will automatically negate the value of C and send it in. But we only want to negate A if A, or we only want to negate B if a is 1. Okay, not this A. This is a completely different A. Okay, don't pay attention to that. Now, this might seem a little bit confusing. So what we're actually doing is when you run it, you have to, um, when you do a program to the CPU, you have to go through something called the decode block. And we'll talk about CPU architecture later, but an integral part of the CPU architecture is the decode block. And decode block takes the instruction set that you give to the CPU. So you'll give C uh, the instruction set in bits, right? So you can say like, you can usually, um, I actually don't know how many possible instructions there are for like a normal Intel CPU, but for our CPU, we're probably going to end up doing a 2-bit instruction set, right? So we can say like 0, 0 for the instruction means add, and then 1, 0 equals subtract, okay? Actually, to simplify this, we're just going to get rid of this last bit. Just to, just for learning purposes, we'll get rid of it. So it's just 0 equals add, 1 equals subtract. So what we want to do is, I'm going to call this instruction bit uh, D. This instruction bit is D. So what we have is A, the A value goes into the adder, and then B goes into A multiplexer okay okay M P and the multiplexer um, will take is technically a one-bit multiplexer and it'll take the value of D 
the value of D is actually what controls the multiplexer. B just goes in as sort of a constant. Okay, so and I'll, this will make more sense later. So D goes in, and if D is equal to one, right? Okay, let's say uh, Q one. D is equal to one. Then run this circuit here. Take the value of B, run it through a NOT gate, and then return it to here. Okay? But if Q is 0, then take B and just go straight through. Now, obviously, this isn't the prettiest thing to look at, but this is the basic idea. So, when coming across this, when I was thinking about how to go about this, I would say, well, build a multiplexer then, right? Just take, um, build the circuit for a multiplexer. Not a terribly complicated circuit to build. It's basically, it's basically an if statement, as we went over here. It's basically an if statement, which is not the worst thing to build. You can get it done with a couple transistors. But, when I was ru running over this, when I was looking over it, I found a much, much simpler solution. The educational tool that I was using told me to... Uh, use a multiplexer and that might make sense if you have multiple things now for our circuit for our purposes we're only doing addition and subtraction right to keep things simple but say if you were doing uh, multiplication and division then you would need more and which the circuit that I've designed will actually break down so what I've done is let's build a truth table and this will become very clear so what we actually want okay so we want the value of D, whether to subtract or not, and then B, and then Y. What actually goes into the addition block Y, okay? So if D is 0 and B is 0, that means do not change the value. If D is 0, that means do not change the value of B, send it right through. So B is 0, so that means send B right through, okay? If D is 1 and B is 0, that means negate the value of b and b is zero so that means y will be one we're negating b okay now if d is zero and b is one okay take the value of b and send it right through one now if d is one and b is one the last option d is one negate the value of b send it right through what do we have here this is an X or gate right here. I'm sorry about all the cars. Uh, this is an X or gate right here. This is what we have. Look at this. It's an X or gate. So what we've taken is the idea of a multiplexer, the exact function of what we're specifically trying to do with a multiplexer, and change it to use an X or gate which is what I've done here. So instead of building myself a multiplexer or say buying a multiplexer, I've actually just used an XOR gate.